Hi and welcome to another video. My name is Brad McDowell and today I'll be taking you through moving the PSM application users to the domain level in a privileged cloud shared services environment. So the objective today is to create the PSM Connect and PSM Admin Connect users in Active Directory. We'll then modify those users to support the PSM sessions and then we'll update the group policy hardening to support the two users we've created. We'll then run the set domain user script, which will do a few things. First, it will onboard those users into CyberArk, and then it will configure the PSM server to support using those accounts. Once we've set all that up, we'll then test that PSM sessions are working and the PSM session monitoring is working. So today's video is all about moving the PSM application users to the domain level. And a bit of background on these application users is there's two of them. The PSM Connect is responsible for starting the PSM session on the PSM machine. And the other one is for monitoring the live privilege sessions. These two accounts are local on each PSM server by default. And if we scroll down further, uh, this is the important part. If you're using RDS per user Kels, and you want PSM sessions to last beyond the one hour limit, you'll need to move the PSM Connect and PSM Admin Connect accounts to your domain level or uh, create them in Active Directory. You don't need to do this procedure if you're using per device Kels. So Microsoft has introduced this requirement since Server 2019. Uh, if you're using Server 2016, you do not need to do this procedure also. And once we've finished this procedure, PSM sessions will last more than one hour. Offline, I've made two connections. I've made a PSM connection to the Linux server here, and I've connected to a domain uh, PSM session here. So the first one here is uh, I've connected to win-svr1, and the second session is connected to the Linux server. I've also offline created a, and I'll just show you that now, I've created a user called Cindy. Cindy is part of the auditor role. So if we go down to Privileged Cloud Auditors and go to Members, we can see I've added Cindy here as Auditor. So I've already logged in as Cindy and we can see this session here. If we go to the Monitoring tab and hit Refresh, after it's refreshed, we can see these two sessions. I'll click on Monitor on both of them. And we can see the two sessions can be monitored. So it's important to test that PSM is working and the monitoring is working before doing this procedure. And as you can see, one connection is being made to connect to server two and one to connect to server one. So this procedure will also require a, a tool in the Privilege Cloud Tools uh, package you've already downloaded, and that's the set domain user script. Before we can run this script, we need to reset the installer user password. So I'll switch back to identity administration. We'll go to users, all service users, installer user, and we'll go to actions and we'll set the password. And make sure you've documented this username also. The next step is to create the two Active Directory users. And if we go down here in the instructions, what I'm about to show you is documented here. They are different, so when you create the PSM Connect, use the instructions here, and the PSM Admin Connect is found down here. I'll switch over to the domain controller and create those now. So I'll place the two accounts in the Service Accounts OU, and I'll create the two new users right now. Set a password. Set the password to never expire and make the second account. Cool, we have the two accounts. I'll now modify these as per the documentation. I recommend you follow the documentation rather than this video in this particular part. Go to environment first. We'll enter in the requirements here. We'll untick these items. We'll go to the remote control tab, untick require user permission, 
view the user session, apply that. We'll go to the account tab, we'll select logon2 and lock this down to the two CyberArk connector servers. We'll apply that, we'll go to the sessions tab and we'll set this to one minute to end a disconnected session. And then from the allow reconnection, we'll set this to from originating client only. I'll follow the procedure on the PSM admin connect. So that's all the settings for the two accounts. There is one more step in group policy. And we'll edit the CyberArk hardening GPO. And we'll go to policies, Windows settings, security settings, local policies, user rights assignment. And we're looking for allow logon through remote desktop services. And we'll add a user or group here. Hit browse. Or type in PSM. This should show us the two accounts we just created. We'll select both of those and click OK and OK again. It's important to do this step now so it gives the system time to replicate in larger environments but in this case it's one domain controller so it's not such a big deal. We're finished with the domain controller. We'll head over to connector server 1 and do the next steps. So on connector server one, I'll open up the file explorer and I've navigated to where we've got the privilege cloud tools. You're looking for this folder here, PSM convert local to domain users. And once we're in there, we'll open up PowerShell as administrator and we'll run set dash domain user to PS1. It will ask us for the PSM connect username. We put in the PSM connect credentials and now it's asking us for the PSM admin connect credentials. So the first question here, it's asking if we've got the correct NetBIOS and DNS name. I'll select Y on that. And now it's asking for the installer user credentials. I'll enter that now and click OK. It's got a complaint here about the CPM is not assigned to the safe PSM. I'll show you how to set that shortly. The hardening script is running here and this question is about removing members of the local remote desktop users group. I'm going to select no in this case. Okay, the script is finished. It's now got some prompts here for some further instructions. I'll do those shortly, but I'll, I'll run this script again on the second connector server. So on the second connector server, we'll run the same script. So the script will detect if the accounts are already onboarded. That's fine. I'll let the script complete. So the script is finished. We can see it's giving us these instructions here, which will follow shortly. So I'll head back to Privilege Cloud and do those steps. So back in Privilege Cloud, we need to do a number of things. The first thing we'll do is go to Policies, then Safes. We'll find the PSM safe and we'll hit edit on that. And we'll set the CPM to the prod CPN because the uh, script was complaining about that. We'll hit save. We'll scroll down to administration, then platform management. And we can see a platform here under windows that's called win-dom-psm admin account. So this platform I like to modify. So we'll hit edit on that. And we'll go to automatic password management, password change. We'll set that to yes. We'll go to password verification. We'll also set that to yes. And I'll go to generate password. Some environments have a minimum password length that's more than 12 characters. So I'll set this to 20. So I'll apply that. I'll go back to the accounts view and go to all accounts again. And I'll favorite, just for this demonstration, these two accounts that we just onboarded. I'll go back to my favorites. 
So if we go into these accounts, you may notice that they've already been verified. And that's because the platform is set to verify passwords when they're added. I'm going to change these passwords as well. And I'll change this one here. We'll head back over to connect to server one and restart the service to speed things up. So back in Privilege Cloud, we'll refresh once again. And we can see the password's been changed. And change on this one. If I head over to the details tab, I'll just show you down here, the username is PSM Connect and the account name is PSM Connect. Usually the account name isn't that string, but I'll just show you the PSM admin account and it's got the same behavior. So PSM admin connect and PSM admin connect here in the account name. The script automatically updates these. I'll show you where, go administration, configuration options, privilege session management, configure PSM servers, and we'll expand out this server. We can see the script has updated the object and admin object here. By default, these are values that point to the local host name. And if I head over to connect to server two, we can see it's updated also. I'll head over to the load balancer and this step isn't necessary because I copied this from when I, we had connector server one. I'll replace these with the expected values. The load balancer actually doesn't use these because all the load balancer does is just redirect the connection. I hit apply and then I'll hit okay. I'll now head back to connector server one. We'll run the GP update slash force because we recently made a change to group policy and we'll type in restart dash computer and over on connector server two, I'll repeat the same steps. Back in privilege cloud, we can go to system health and go to the PSM and PSM for SSH. And the two connector servers are connected and I can see they started up at 17 and 18 minutes past the hour. And this confirms the PSM service has started. So now we'll go back to the accounts view and we'll make some connections. First, we'll start off with the local admin on the Linux target. That's logged in and I'll go and log in. We'll log into win server one from the brad.admin account. That's logged in. We'll head over to the auditor session from earlier. So I'm logged in as Cindy here and we'll hit refresh. And we can see the two sessions here. I'll click on monitor on both of those. And this confirms we have a two PSM sessions working on connector server one and connector server two. And finally, the auditor can monitor the sessions. And that concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.